everyone hope everybody's having a good day uh we have a lot to cover and before i even do it do or even say anything i just wanted to say thank you for everyone for subscribing uh for the helpful comments uh, suggestions and all that other good stuff like it really helps out especially when um working on these cars and such uh I even appreciate the armchair comments i i appreciate those also even though some of them are like huh well whatever so i started this channel as a sort of like a recorded therapy session to deal with my illness and to provide some kind of like value out there um feel my hobbies it's literally like working on cars just feels more of like a therapy session to me i want to put this it, like my just the premise of like an inspiration to others that you put your mind to something you go ahead and get it accomplished get it done i'm not a mechanic by trade or anything i just actually my field is not even anything to do with cars it's computers yeah computers software stuff like that I uh, just hated being so Vaseline by the dealerships and the majority of the time they're blaming incompetence. But I digress, that's another story. Uh, anywho, just want to say thanks and I appreciate it. So getting into things, a few weeks ago my starter went and while it was down I went ahead and did some updates and inspected the car. So the main thing I wanted to do was check that the turbo was good, still like no shaft lay any oil leaks, uh, any busted lines or anything like that. I also noticed the signs of a failing injector in which was totally five, or was it six? I think it was five. So I went ahead and swapped the entire bank out and changed the oil since when the injector is failing, it would degrade your oil, which in turn can lead to a blown motor. And I don't want to deal with a blown motor again right now. Uh, I also took the turbo off and inspected it and it was still in good condition, no shaft play or signs of leaking oil, all the components on 3 kit has been working flawlessly. Uh, I would definitely purchase again for my next 335 even though you can also just get the hot side kit of it or get your own manifolds from somewhere else and source all the pieces separately and still come out below like 3k or so. so. It's different ways to getting into single turbo, and the main reason I went to single turbo was because of maintenance, maintenance reasons. And since I'm doing all the maintenance, if I'm paying somebody uh, to do the maintenance for my car, then sure, I'd be like, yo, just get the, the twins and get low end torque, high end power, all that stuff all in one. But I'm like, nah, if anything breaks or anything, I can go ahead and swap it out real easy and quick, and I don't have to worry about any two lines for the cooling lines of the turbo and even to drop the turbo just a pain in the butt. it with so now I have HKS just sitting I also went ahead and tapped intake manifold since it's one of the requirements for running a tile blow valve so tapped it pretty much to run a larger vacuum line so it wasn't that hard especially since the intake manifold was off so I was like you know what why not I also had a four bar map sensor I upgraded that also uh, I went ahead and put it in since I was like okay Everything's been running good. I'm gonna go ahead and add this in and I can pretty much be ready to up the boost if I wanted to. I also had to upgrade the map to account for that. So IHD is pretty much a checkbox. So that was a lot easier compared to going ahead and pretty much just a few values inside of the tables where why not? It's a runtime check value. So that worked out pretty good. Uh, turbo here, obviously. Uh, the housing is tapped for vacuum. Uh, I mistakenly took two holes. I had it too much over on this side, so uh, I had to go ahead and just find something to plug it. So I have it running here over here to the max solenoid and turbo cover and what was this? DEI lava heat wrap. So the manifolds are wrapped plus the downpipe all the way down. 
the only heat management I really have is on the oil return line oil return line uh, off the turbo there's a heat sleeve on there and also let me see just pretty much some heat tape right here along these so and I have it along the window washer I wrap that also but other than that down here also did the valve cover put some on it and so far no cracks no nothing it's been working flawlessly so over here is the charge pipe with a tile blow off valve it's running all back here upgraded map sensor and all that and yeah it's pretty much been running pretty good this is how much I had to cut off from I made two cuts this was the initial cut it was still too long so I went ahead and even it out so it's best to have more <laughs> left over instead of cutting too much and then you don't have nothing else to modify so I just had to cut these pieces off and it fit perfectly so the last thing I really want to cover is a PCV and I want to run that's where I have this line right here going it's coming off the high side which is over here and then I want to run that to a is your car does that also? Like it just starts humming out of nowhere. <laughs> but anyways, it's coming off of this side and then go to the uh what was it oil catch can and then the other port goes out to the to the intake. Not intake, but the exhaust track connected here to uh I forgot what it's called. But uh who's the video? There's another YouTuber who was also I think he should have a video on a PCV setup and it's pretty much his setup of how he's doing it with his on this on the high side that's how I want mine to be set up also so I think his name is blue n54 or n54 blue I'll confirm it I'll show it right here right now and yeah he does he got some pretty good videos and he also has an on three setup too it's a pretty good channel so I'd encourage you to go ahead and check it out uh, yeah so really the PCB setup I want to uh, do and I finally got the motor on a stand and yeah I want to tear into it and see what the initial cause of the problem was so that'd be subsequent project I gotta do and what else All right now I want to switch out the, the whole headliner get these seats out and pretty much I want to do up the interior like See, I have the black vinyl over here, so I didn't wrap here yet, but I'm pretty much going to redo everything. Um, I'm going to gut out in here, and I don't know what I'm going to do with the color. I might try to change the carpet color to black or leave it. I don't know. i just been playing around with all this stuff. I have some extra parts over there to play with, but yeah. Last thing, PCB setup and interior and breaking that motor apart. Also, I forgot, one other thing I want to do is finish, pretty much I'm trying to learn right now, reading up how the best way of addressing, I want to get this wider, but as I stated before, I want a whole metal, like a metal setup, I don't want to, what's it called, I don't want over fenders, so if I'm going to cut this, I want to make sure to get this thing wide enough, like it'll be like, it's pretty much almost like if it came from the factory. So that's what I want to do with it, body-wise on this end. Um, same thing here. So I just want the rear to be wider, but I don't want the overly protrudous over fenders and seam rivets and all that stuff. Pretty much what I could also do is get the over fenders and have it molded in, but at the end of the day, I want it to be all metal. Anywho, uh, thanks for watching like comment subscribe and pretty much i'm gonna try to get all my parts together and get started on these projects and i'll see y'all in the next video out